So World of Warcraft is one of my favorite games of all time. And honestly, despite the last few years of the game and developers being, uh... Well, in an industry that is notable for having a toxic workplace environment and consistently mistreating its employees, being one of the first names brought up in those discussions is definitely an achievement. It is a corpse. It is a corpse being puppeteered by Activision and uh, Bobby Kotick. But that's a topic for another day when I feel more depressed. But one thing I can actually commend the game on in the last few expansions was the rise of complex secrets. Now of course hidden secrets in WoW is absolutely nothing new. I mean all the way back in Classic, there's big secrets such as the original Corrupted Ashbringer having a big unique scripted event in the Scarlet Monastery. But by the time Legion and Battle for Azeroth came around is when the secrets went from pretty simple to find albeit sometimes it's difficult to complete the steps, to absolute fucking nightmares. So let me go ahead and start this comparison with the Riddler's Mindworm. This wormy fellow was found by clicking on hidden pages in a certain order throughout the entire world. Starting in Dalaran, you click this book here, then travel to a different continent and go to Duskwood and click this page here, travel to Firelands again on an entirely different continent, Clear out the entire raid or do the Alyss resource skip if you're a real gamer. Click on this page here. Go to Old Doom on the other end of the continent. Click the page. Go to the Siege of Orgrimmar raid in an entirely different continent. And nowadays, sometimes in an entirely different timeline. Get to the Shaw of Pride and click the page here. Afterwards, scuttle your way towards the Well of Eternity dungeon in the Caverns of Time in Kalimdor. Again, entirely different continent and time. Clear it out and get the next page right here. Then go to this northern area in Kunlai Summit, fly to this temple, go between the Tiger Paws and click the page right there. Then go back to Old Doom, buy the statue, click the page there. Then finally head back to the Eastern Kingdoms to Westfall and get your mount right here. So obviously this is a bit of a process, but one that is very easily manageable nowadays with the power of the internet. Now let's go ahead and contrast this with the hive mind in the next expansion, Battle for Azeroth. First you need to head to Shattereth and talk to Grifta and purchase the Talisman of True Treasure Tracking and the four items behind them will start going. These four items correlate with different items you need to get before you can get them out. To get the right crystal monocle you have to head to Vashir and interact with multiple vendors and complete multiple trades. You need to swim really fast for this so it's heavily beneficial but not required to complete the quest line cycle beforehand to get the Vashir Seahorse or otherwise have an underwater mount. You need to buy these things in this order and then upon buying all this you can go back to the vendor, Sir Finley Murgleton and buy the right crystal monocle. For the blue crystal monocle, you have to run around on the entirely different planet, go back to Shattereth, and then head to High Mountain and click on this right here. Go to Karazhan, clear the raid, and click on this right here. Clear the Razor Friend Downs dungeon, and click the letter on a box behind the last boss, and then Mount Hyjal on a table on top of the tree, and then Ice Crown on top of this, and Talon Long Steps, and then the blue crystal monocle is finally found on top of the Nexus in Borean Tundra. To get the green crystal monocle, what you have to do is... What the... How? What? Yellow is fucking bionicles, of course, after this you have to... You, you gotta... You need to get a toy... Cats... Platforms... You need five people for platforms... Google Docs... Why, why has Google Docs request... A fucking ACDC Highway to Hell... Make sure to not have server lag or unequip the talisman of true treasure tracking... If you do, you'll die... Hive mind. So, as you can kind of guess, the secrets may take a long time to find out. But if you would believe it, it actually isn't all that long, usually. This absolutely titanic secret only took about five days in total to figure out. Which is surprisingly short, but I guess when you have an entire community dedicated to just traveling around the entire game and searching in every conceivable spot and sharing your every discovery together, yeah, I can kind of see how that process may be pretty quick. And the hive mind isn't even close to the most difficult secret. I obviously am not going to transition this into all the information on the lucid nightmare, but one of the very many, many steps in finding this mount required you to head to Nomragon, which is a tragedy in of itself, and then look at a wall full of binary. Which was actually a red herring, 
It took players 48 hours to get past it, but they realized that the binary is in sets of 8, 5, and 24. But 8s and 5s always appear as a pair. So for each 8 and 5 pair, they took the sum of the digits in each side and multiplied them together. And for each digit of 24, they collectively summed up all the digits. That gave them 6, 12, 14, 7, 13, 18, 12, 3, 13, 20, 25, 3, 8, 18, 7, 25, 2, 13. Which, when put through a basic Caesar cipher, gave FLNGMRLCMTYCHRGYBM. And these correlated with three Murloc related pet battle abilities namely Falling Murloc, Mighty Charge, and I Beam, which at max level did a base total of 684, 560, and 1110 damage. Then the 180 found at the end of all the binary literally just means to do a 180, flipping it around. Then the plus one 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 one. I don't know if that's too many or too little ones, but it's just simple addition, which gives us one two 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 one seven six five nine seven. That's the code. Good luck figuring that one out. Also, this wasn't the most time-consuming part of that, there was also a fucking chair that was insanity, but honestly we need to get to the titular secret sooner than later. I guess if you want me to make a sequel video, I hate to do the YouTube thing, but feel free to do the algorithm things. Here's 180 green screens to passively aggressively belittle you, and feel free to yell at me if it's something that's wanted. If there's demand, I'll see what I can do. Anyway... <laughs> And some of these secrets are actually solved in pretty unorthodox ways. So today I wanted to share one that took an extremely long amount of time to find, and how the secret finding community attempted to find it, the process in finding it, and how it was finally discovered. Because, uh, it was pretty unceremonious to say the least. This here is the Slime Serpent. The Slime Serpent is a mount. Every expansion and every patch adds a bunch of new ones. And at the time of this video, World of Warcraft's current expansion, Shadowlands was no different. In this expansion, there is a dungeon and a zone called Maldraxxus called Plaguefall. It's a pretty interesting dungeon with a neat aesthetic and story going on in it. Maldraxxus as a whole was already my favorite zone in all of Shadowlands, so by the time I got to it, I was thoroughly pumped. However, when I was running through it, I decided to check the mount journal to see if a mount dropped in this dungeon, and surprisingly enough, there was one. However, something was... off about it. It didn't really have a drop source. So when you look up a mount in the mount journal, it usually tells you the source on how to get it. And this is especially so for dungeon mounts. For example, if the mount requires you to do a certain achievement or do a specific thing, it'll usually direct you on where to start or specifically how to get it. So, for example, in the same expansion, if you look through the Necrotic Wake dungeon or look up Marrowfang in the mount journal, you'd find out through both of these that Marrowfang's reins dropped from the last boss of the dungeon, Nalthor. The Slime Serpent, however, apparently dropped from... Slime Serpent. And there wasn't a Slime Serpent boss or even any Slime Serpent enemies in the dungeon. So, already this was kind of a slight anomaly, and its mount entry is just as vague as its drop source. This mysterious creature works beneath the slime pools of Plaguefall. No one knows where it came from. So, of course, me and my friend who shall remain nameless decided the best thing to do was to look it up online to see if anybody knew about this. And the only two things we managed to find were people who were asking how do you get this mount, and while news websites that lumped it into a collective post when talking about mounts that would be included in the Shadowlands expansion. Of course, this wasn't just off-putting, but this rang some fucking alarm bells, especially so in my ADHD brain, so I decided to spend the next 40 minutes of my life finding any possible clues of this mount's existence before moving on with my life. Only to come back like 30 minutes later to spend another 2 hours of my life looking for hints, 
So here's a few random discoveries I made, so stick with me. These may all be mentioned in the future. Now the first thing I kind of realized was this dungeon is big. And I mean really, really big. Compared to other dungeons in the expansion like Theater of Pain or Mists of Tirna Scythe, there is a lot of open areas and potential hidden paths, or maybe you can just parkour through it with certain classes. I mean, hell, this was the expansion where every class in the game had the potential to pick up a huge blink ability. And it wouldn't be the first time there was a faction or covenant restricted mount, so maybe that was it? I mean, it'd be strange to start with, because obviously this would be a Necrolord dungeon in specific, but... I don't know, this isn't exactly standard either, so fuck it, I don't know. The second thing I noticed is just how many fucking serpents there are in the dungeon. You pretty much constantly see them way out in the distance, and I thought this may be a potential clue, or even the solution. Like having a group that's tanky enough, or geared enough, or can heal enough that you can crawl through all of the awful goop. I mean, it does apparently drop from the Slime Serpent, and uh... I would very handily consider this a Slime Serpent. Thirdly, the third boss of a dungeon casts an extremely long lockpicking spell. And after she finishes casting it, in air quotes, it doesn't appear to do anything, and she just begins to recast it again. And it actually wouldn't be the first time an extremely long spell was part of a puzzle. Although, to be fair, those spells were way, way, way longer. We're talking multiple weeks to cast, but, as you may have guessed, this also was not very helpful. So eventually I left the dungeon, went to sleep, went back to work, did my own thing for a week or so, and eventually decided to check up on my guy on Google. And sure enough, it's prompted up discussions, and the talented WoW secret finding community were off to the races. And as you may have guessed from the few puzzles I've already shown you, when people got to theorizing, the theories were just completely batshit insane. And realistically, who could fucking blame them? However, before getting into the theorized solutions, there were definitely a bunch of items and thematics and common themes that generally people kept an eye on and integrated into most working theories. So I want to go ahead and talk about those and eventually ramp those up as well. For an extremely easy to understand and inconsequential first example, there's a pair of shoulders you can obtain from the third boss called the Maodorous Gristle Stone Spalders. And when you equip them, it gives you an insane, game-ruining, absolutely absurd buff that makes you stinky. Many people theorize that this was a part of the puzzle, but many people also theorize that it wouldn't be since it would restrict the secret mount from any classes that can't wear cloth, and make it extremely inconvenient for any characters that don't primarily wear leather since you'd have to have a friend who also wore leather trade it to you. But to be fair, this wouldn't be the first time a mount was restricted to a class or a group that had a specific class. For an example, on something very similar to this, back in the Burning Crusade you needed to have a druid for the Raven Lord mount, which had an extremely low drop chance from a boss that you could only summon with a druid. That is an extremely old example and wouldn't be in line with any of the current or recent secrets, but... Again, there's not a whole lot of expectation. Another thing that people started to integrate into theories was a book that you can find called The Treatise on Hebestian Logic. And people really, really went in on this as it describes... Well, secret finding. I won't read all of it, and really this is where I would love to talk about certain lines or themes, but... Really, eventually, every single line was integrated into multiple different interpretations or solutions. And this will be mentioned time and time and time and time again by the time we get into the actual theories. Also, another thing people started to keep note of is specific NPC dialogue. For example, in this expansion, there is a very enigmatic race of humanoid energy. 
and it's extremely difficult to ever really put a pin on their true motivations or goals, as they can and will play every side in a conflict to further their support. And you'll often find them meticulously navigating through space and time to track down and steal treasures for knowledge and power. Or interacting with different races to try and further... Oh wait, that's uh... That's the wrong race. Uh, in this expansion, there is a very enigmatic race of humanoid energy, and it's extremely difficult to ever re They have a bunch of really fucking weird dialogue. The one that I think is the most interesting personally are these lines you can occasionally hear in the capital city of Oribos. Quote, Things seem to be going well. Give or take a few things escaping, but we're doing well. The attendants won't notice a few serpents slithering around, will they? Just blame it on the mortals. They are so very forgetful about where they leave their serpents, after all. Wouldn't you agree? Exactly. Ha! Huh. And really, there is a bunch of dialogue that is just as interesting, but I'm going to go ahead and just run with the word enigmatic. It is very, very easy to overanalyze these lines, when really, nobody understands what the fuck they're on about in the first place. Including the writers. There's also a random spider you can find in Maldraxxus, which was, uh... Fucking bizarre, to say the least. Firstly, sometimes he was just a fucking eyeball. I don't know why, he just was. Also, despite being a fucking spider, it was just a humanoid for... whatever reason. And in multiple languages, its name actually included a title. The Keeper of Secrets. And obviously, since he's around Plaguefall, to quote the Twitch youth, it's a little bit sus. Also on the PTR, there's a version of a mob called Hyvax the Secret Keeper, who looks entirely different. And lastly, Hyvax was fucking difficult to find. To even see them in the first place, you'd often have to spam Farsight or Eagle Eye to get into a position where you can see them. And to reach them is an entirely different story. So all of this really led to this being a prime candidate for a secret. A hard-to-reach spider slash eyeball if they're feeling risque that also had a PTR mob called Hyvax the Secret Keeper, as well as how close it is to Plaguefall, albeit in an extremely inconvenient position, this was kind of a main candidate for a secret or a step in a secret. But to try and segue this into a different point, although its name was different in multiple languages, so was the actual mountain journal for the Slime Serpent. Now, multiple languages and secrets is a little bit hard to balance, but it's actually not something that Blizzard doesn't account for. For example, previously when I was talking about that big fuck-off code in Nomragon, in traditional and simplified Chinese, this puzzle just didn't work. So, instead of just hoping that word of mouth would spread and that people in the Chinese servers would just look it up after different regions figured out the code, the localization team actually made an entirely brand new puzzle with the same solution. So different languages was a thing that was accounted for in these secrets. So people started to compare and contrast this mountain journal in different languages. And there were a few really cool thematics across languages. For example, the only words that were the same in every single one was Mysterious Creature. And take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt because I'm a dumb American, so I have the privilege of ensuring that all around the world people speak my language. But for example, in different languages, there were just phrases or sentences or words that wouldn't make sense with the overall thematic. For example, I believe in German, Italian, and French specifically, they don't have a word for no one. So it becomes nobody, and we don't know of its origins. But to go back into something a little bit more concrete, Blizzard really likes to try and make the first conceivable step in a secret extremely easy to find. For example, on the Hive Mind, the first true clue was the Mount's flavor text. A true meeting of the minds, which led players to Grifta in Shatterath, which sold the talisman of true treasure tracking. And I'll talk about this a little bit more in depth later, but 
this post is really interesting and it's something I'm going to leave in the description because it's a good read if you're interested in this sort of thing. But for one really small last thing I want to mention, it's more than possible to entirely skip most of the dungeon. Obviously this depends on your class or if your group has a specific class, but it's entirely possible to skip the first and second boss and all the trash in between. The only conceivable roadblock was for the final boss, in which you did need to kill the third boss in order to gain entry, but that was it. So maybe the solution was beating the bosses in a specific order, or doing the dungeon with as few kills as possible, but as you may have guessed, none of this was the solution. It may have been a part of it, sure, but it wasn't THE solution. And after a lot of discussion, and when more and more and more people started talking about the Slime Serpent, people eventually decided to ask Blizzard themselves. And every time it was asked, Blizzard confirmed that the mount is obtainable and they wouldn't give any information on its location or how to get it. But one thing in particular that really, really started to divide the community was the fact that people already had the mount. In fact, there is live footage of people on beta getting the mount. How? Nobody knew. And really, there is a threshold between luck, extreme luck, and a borderline impossibility. And if we had to go full infinite monkey theorem, the amount of time it would take for any person to just figure this out on their own, unintentionally, is borderline impossible. And really, it started to gaslight the community because there was just the possibility that we were completely overthinking it. Like, just for a complete spitball that I can bust out in a second, there was nothing stopping this from being an extremely rare occurrence after beating the dungeon. WoW already has a bunch of extremely low drop chance mounts that people tend to latch onto, and really, since you didn't just get it, and you had to go all the way up here in order to find it, it didn't even need to be as rare as the other mounts because not a whole lot of people backtrack here anyways. Due to the lack of an easy way to get out of the dungeon, most people just took a hearthstone, or took a portal, or did anything else other than backtracking through the entire dungeon. Which again, keep in mind, is pretty fucking big. And there's never a difficulty where it's a solid play. If you're doing it on heroic or mythic, the mobs can still aggro onto you after you beat the dungeon. Or if you're doing it on Mythic Plus, usually those runs last long enough that your Heartstone should just be up already. Especially if you have another Heartstone, or a different way to teleport back to a capital city. But to get back to the main point, some people got really hostile about this. Truly, if it was simple to find, we would have found it already. It could have just been a bug on beta. It's not concrete proof, and... I hate to say it, but I can understand why they were so defensive. An entire community of people were trying to find it for months, and months, and months, and months. So the fact that people were inherently undermining it by possibly saying that it could be a really easy solution, it kind of stings in its own hollow way. And eventually it started to become total insanity. Because usually when it comes to WoW secrets, there's a conceivable first step. Even in the longest WoW secret that I know of, people knew the starting point and even figured out quite a few steps before getting stuck on one in particular. So the lack of any direction started to send people spiraling. And don't get me wrong, there were more and more and more things discovered over time such as a few items that gave you a hidden quest flag when used, or specific things that were data mined in order to try and find it, but... I think I've said enough. So let me go ahead and talk about some popular theories that were popping up near the end of this search. Which, by the way, I am going to mention now. Obviously, to get most of the information for this video, I needed to talk to the mod team on that server, and I want to say a few days after I got everything I needed, the mod team actually made the entire channel public. 
It doesn't add a whole lot to this video, but it is something that is incredibly cool to see, so I did want to mention it offhandedly. Anyways, on to the actual theories. Remember the treatise of Henbestian logic? Yeah, that was included in virtually every single theory. And another thing I already mentioned was the broker dialogue. Which, when you combine a book that is inherently enigmatic about secret finding, and combine it with very enigmatic dialogue from a very enigmatic race which means virtually fucking nothing, uh, 400 IQ theories is a little bit of an understatement. And it got even fucking worse when people tried to relate this to random flavor text on random items. It was total insanity. There were links to links to links to links to links. I can't even fucking describe it. People were integrating random fucking drinks you would buy from vendors or NPCs across the entire fucking planet. I don't... I just don't. And you know when you have 800 different fucking links? Sometimes the end goal it doesn't even make sense. And I think for one of the best troll plays that nobody intended, the treatise of Henbestian logic has the biggest fucking red herring that made the... It just made any possible fucking theories insane. The color yellow was a vital part of most theories. The color fucking yellow. And then you have shit which is the first foundational discipline is the understanding of centennial connectives which invite the student con consider the ways that propositions are joined and modified by logical opera- What the fuck? And people just took this to heart. Some people started referencing drinks, and zones, and random trash from across the universe and random vendor items that don't even make any sense. And when people are like, okay, we need to analyze the color yellow across every possible application, the color yellow is found in everything. Everything is included and nothing is discounted. When nothing remains, everything is equally as possible. I... <laughs> No. No. Just, no. I'm with Aaron on this, who suggested- ah! This was a very special descent into madness. And I'm not even saying this as, like, a knock. I can't be a dick about any of this, but when one of the last theories that was added was Green Worm look like Green Dragon from Pokemon that both have weird entries in journal, and that was the entire basis, I'm starting to think that we may have collectively lost our fucking marbles. But then, after five months of complete anguish and misery, a shining bastion of hope emerges from the infinite dark, who got our big clue. In fact, it was more than a clue. This bastion, this paragon of infinite charisma, found the fucking solution. And for this, I'm going to have to directly shout out and link a channel. Durandil the Hunt. I don't know if it's Durandil or how you pronounce it, but... This channel is verbatim from the About page, a channel where I show off my hunter soloing skill. And he does a lot of just that. Soloing dungeons, soloing raid bosses, soloing raids, it's a lot of soloing. And eventually on this man's epic crusade to 1v1 everything until God himself is subject to his will, he got the Plaguefall. And in this grand crusade, he soloed all of Plaguefall on the mythic difficulty. Which is extremely commendable, by the way. Specifically, the strategy on the third boss was really interesting, and by the end, Hunter ended up being one of the only DPS specs, if not the only DPS spec that was able to solo Plaguefall. But the point is, he eventually completed Plaguefall entirely by himself and said jobs done, easy, bye bye But then he had to get out of the dungeon. Now one thing to note, and this isn't a part of the puzzle, but again, most Shadowlands dungeons have an extremely easy way for you to get back to the beginning. Either through a teleporter to the beginning, a newfound path to the beginning, or sometimes even just an entire portal to take you back to the beginning at the very end of the dungeon. 
And the only exceptions to this were Theater of Pain, The Other Side, and Plaguefall. In Theater of Pain and The Other Side are both exceptions only by technicality, because although there is no teleport or anything to get you back to the beginning, you loop back to the beginning to beat the dungeon. So that leaves exclusively Plaguefall. So our guy Durandil had to get out, and instead of deciding to hearth out like any reasonable person would, he decided to run back. To do this, he used this portal up, and on the run back, he saw, gasp, a slime serpent. He clicked on it, expecting it to be a portal back to the entrance, but nope, it's a mount. And he reported to the Discord and said, quote, Didn't expect it to be a big secret. Sorry, I accidentally stumbled upon it. He just fucking owned an entire community spending months upon months upon months trying to find something, and he's still respectful. Like, this entire community was data mining, looking into every item in the game, looking into the color fucking yellow, and doing all these insane theories only to be massacred, absolutely decimated by a fucking hunter who likes to play the game by himself. And... Sure enough, at first everybody was in disbelief, they thought this might have been a bad photoshop, but no. They looked him up, and he had the slime serpent. And within a few hours, everybody just figured it out. You just had to play through the dungeon by yourself. In fact, at first you didn't even need to beat the dungeon. All you needed to do was beat this one trash pack and these two bosses. And you didn't even need to do it on Mythic, you could do it on Heroic. And I'm gonna be honest, although from how he typed it out, I think he just like, looked up the mount and realized there was a big secret, I feel like somebody at Blizzard tipped him off. And this isn't even me being inauthentic, I almost think it's a genuine possibility. So, yeah, as much as it feels slightly anticlimactic for all this video's build-up to be one hunter soloing a dungeon, that's kind of the point. I'm sure I'll get some random passive-aggressive YouTube comments going, ha ha ha, this video could be one paragraph in short upload, but that's kind of the point of this video. Like, think about the literal hundreds, if not thousands of people spending hours upon hours upon hours theorizing, data mining, looking through every nook and cranny trying to find any crumb or trail of a hint, only for it to be this simple of an answer. And, yeah, sure enough, when word got out, when I went into a capital city, everybody was on a slime serpent. Of course, this was found months and months and months after Shadowlands released, so pretty much every character had access to tons of gear. In fact, by this time, it wasn't just possible, but it was pretty easy to have best-in-slot gear across your entire character. And especially if you're playing a tank. Yeah, most people were more than capable of soloing this dungeon on Heroic. And... Most of my friends eventually got the Slime Serpent, and I was seeing them all around everywhere, and seemingly everybody had one. But other than this, Shadowlands hasn't really had any big secrets, and I can't help but feel kind of sad about that. Although this video was 100% me talking about a thing that really interests me, if there is a call to action here, I would just really love to shout out this community for being incredible. Just overall, some of the kindest souls you can find in this game, and truthfully, with more and more toxicity following the game and building up in the community, it's kind of nice to just see a nice hub full of nice people. And really, although this isn't a make or break, I would really love to see another one of these secrets in the upcoming expansion. There's already a bunch of incredibly neat things that people are finding out in the overworld, and... I mean, if I had to be blunt, it's not a hot take to say that comparing the early days of WoW to nowadays, the community building aspects of the game has only decreased more and more and more over time. 
Having these short little events from time to time where an entire community of people just gather around to try and solve an issue, or to figure out a solution more so, it's really neat to see. And I mean, hell, back in the earliest days of WoW, there was a ton of myths and urban legends about really deep secrets. Like, remember when everybody was fishing in random fucking pools of water trying to fish up the Ashbringer? Was it fucking stupid? Absolutely. Was it fun to speculate and try random bullshit for the sake of trying random bullshit? Also absolutely. I mean, shit. When the actual Ashbringer itself was an item that was made usable by players, there was a hidden appearance that you found, not so coincidentally, by fucking fishing. Small little things like that add so much to a game like this. And I really think, again, although it isn't a make or break for the entire expansion, I think it'd be really neat to see more of this in the future. Obviously do not go down to Blizzard HQ and force them to construct the Dark Souls of Scavenger Hunts to get a hidden battle pet that plays a Vine Boom sound effect whenever you click on it, but uh... If Blizzard is watching this, and not just a Blizzard employee, but literally the entire fucking company sitting down in a Zoom call and watching this in complete unison, uh, I think this would be neat. Mm hmm. You watched the video and got to the end. What do you want me to say? I already included 800 green screens earlier, it'd be blasphemy to include 1600. I guess I'm slightly mandated to say my patrons' names in a very parasocial sense, so if you want to stick around for that, big thank you to Jacob S., Michael P., Droopy, Breadman, Snailio, Catapultman1, Chair, Judge and Jury, Wubkitten, Skarner Crystallin, Teddy Bear Guy, Cray, Minister of Sauces, Mr. Bones, Naho Yuzu, Pyro Musical, No Goat, Blazeheart, and Angus JS. I did all that in one breath for whatever reason, but if you would want to throw some money at my gun face to make more videos like these fine individuals, or alternatively if you have a domination kink, there's a link to my Patreon in the description. Also, I don't know what the hell a YouTube super is, but it told me I could turn it on, so I turned it on, and that's a thing too. It kind of overlaps the same role, but regardless, you'll get a big parasocial thank you in the comments. There's also some other cool links and stuff you can find in the description, including all the music used, some channels I highlighted, the WoW Secret Finding Community Discord itself, and uh... Probably not this, you should avoid this, but everything else down there I think is pretty neat. Anyways, that's kind of it. Thank you for watching, I normally leave that at the beginning. It genuinely does mean a lot, but it is 3am and I am extremely sleep deprived, so I don't know how to script anymore, and as always... Guys, when things look bad, you can't just give up on the world of Warcraft.